Hello everyone. I thought I'd make a quick video showing some polypainting techniques, like really quickly, uh, just to give your model a bit more oomph if you quickly want to pose it, paint it, and render it with Marmoset Toolbag or in ZBrush itself, or as I normally do these days, Redshift within Maya, which is my preferred renderer, because it's fast and I know it well and it's just, I love its post-processing tools, options, bloom and bokeh and so on. So this step is not essential, but it's fun and easy to polypaint in ZBrush, and you can even use that as a base for your albedo in Painter. Uh, but if you just don't want to do any UVs, retopo, and so you just want to get some textures on your model, this is a great way to do it. So we should probably pose this guy first. I combined everything apart from the, the base. Let's choose our lasso. I like a very simple pose because... I don't want to spend too much time on it. Uh, that is weird. Wonder why it didn't. Select it the first time. Okay, so I've inverted the mask. And if you control tap on the mask, it softens it. Now, sometimes that happens. Because it's so high poly, well, 6 million is not insane. Uh, it doesn't blur very far. So I, I blur a mask because it's doing the same thing. And then dilute mask. And it creates this nice feathering effect. So I'm just going to do a very relaxed, non-dynamic pose. I should have made that symmetrical. Oh, never mind. I'll live. Okay. Control tap to invert the mask. I'm not going to be too surgical about it. Control tap. Blah, 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 blah. Dilute the end. I only do dilute once because it can sometimes sharpen, end up sharpening the mask. It's not perfect, but... Let's have his head, so... What am I doing? I'm going to leave him like this now. Let's start poly painting. So, the very first thing I like to do for grayscale is I'll go to the standard brush and turn on RGB and turn off add. Now, you need to fill an object with color first before you can paint on it, which is this button, fill object. I've made that a hotkey, Alt C, which is great. So now it's going to fill him. If you have MRGB, it'll fill him with both the color you have selected and whichever material, but I don't want to... I want the material to be able to be changed still. So I highly recommend make an Alt C or hotkey because it's not it doesn't do anything else. And C, whatever color my cursor is hovering over, ZBrush picks that color, which is great as well. Unfortunately, not outside of the app, but yeah. Okay, so I've let me turn off AO. We're gonna use a lot of masking, which makes this really fast and. And I enjoy it. Uh, masking. Mask. The first thing I tend to do is mask by peaks and valleys. Control tap to invert it. Control H. Hides the mask. Because you can't really work with a mask on. You can't see what you're doing. Let me get my pen. Uh, okay, standard. Just RGB, not MRGB. No, that's for material. And fill, Alt C. I'm going to fill it with a darker grey. Invert that. Oh, clear the mask. Alright, let's mask my cavity. Control H to hide the mask. It's nah. darker shade. Okay, let's go a bit lighter. Let's do 
Uh, I meant to do modify smoothness in the beginning. Let me undo that. I mean, it's no effort, right? Modify smoothness. Invert. Control H. Alt C. Or. In case you forgot, fill object. Flood, essentially. Clear the mask. Uh, so now, uh, mask by cavity, control tap to invert, control H, and now let's do the darker, alt C, mm, too extreme, there we go, clear the mask. Now I tend to, so I've cleared the mask, even though we couldn't see it, it was there, I go real dark, symmetry on, and I... Actually, no. Turn this on first. Hide it. Get some broad strokes in there. Okay, and now we want to lighten him up. Highlight stuff. I want to make his rear darker than his front. Ooh, I don't want color. I mean, if you want color, go for it. But I do like working in grayscale when I'm poly painting. Okay, clear the mask. Let's go lighter. Lighten it up. Let's, um, I want to group these eyes together. Control, shift, tap, tap, invert. I want these pure white. You know what? I want to add a material because I can. I like using gel. Go back to just RGB. Let's make the teeth nice and white. I stand out. Broad strokes, I'm not being too anal about it. Just makes it the model pop a bit more, and you can really have fun with using these vertex colors in Marmoset's ray trace renderer. And I'll show you how to do that. It's super easy, and this is just so quick to get just a plain high poly sculpt to pop if you. Just want to do some renders for your art station or your Instagram or wherever you like to post. Yeah, I kind of like that. One thing I've started doing is I've borrowing or stealing Substance Painter's alphas and procedurals and using importing them here to use as brushes. I'll show you how I do that in a second. I'm just on my other screen. Apologies for not showing that, but there is sensitive work material on there, which I'm, you know, NDA stuff. So I don't want to just have a hint of trouble. No, thank you, sir. Uh, my stuff, alphas, this is directories I'm browsing to. Painter alphas, alpha. Ooh, hang on, I can do this, can't I? Let's show a bit. Oh, crap, I'm going to have to block that out. Mm, there's nothing sensitive here, actually. But there could have been. So these are straight up taken from Painter. I really like using this, for example. Uh, with that. Yeah. So C, you grab any color that's under your cursor, which is fantastic, right? 
You don't want symmetry again, as I've said in the previous video, down the middle, because it'll look terrible. Terrible is maybe an exaggeration, but it won't look good. Don't do it. If I don't want color, I've got a little bit of color. That looks ridiculous, but we'll get something going. Darker. Darker. I mean, there's alphas everywhere on the net. People are selling some awesome packs on the marketplaces. Uh, you know, but I just happen to realize, well, I can just take Painter's stuff. So I'm slowly building that up. So here's Painter. Uh, if you go open template, this is, and you open the tiling material template, it'll just be there. It'll be this. But I don't want displacement, so no, go away. Get rid of everything that's there. Two layers. Alt tap hides everything but that one channel. We just want color. Make this black. The background. Why is that showing red? Okay, never mind. Just color and we want to I want this to be pure white. Uh add a black mask. And I'm pressing C to cycle to base color. One to choose a brush. And on my other screen, I have. Oh, for fuck's sake. Don't like having it all cramped here, but uh, never mind. It's fine for, for this little demonstration. Or is it? Yeah, it's fine. So let's say let's browse the alphas. I like it's like so let's say I wanna use this. Just go mad add a fill layer to this guy. Um this is not good. Just drag that into the fill layer. Press four, you can see. This is, you know, where it tells, but we're not really interested in that. I just want this. So, Control shift e is export. I've already made a preset. Called color only. Which is, you know, I just copied any of these and deleted, every, deleted all the stuff. And just color will be exported. Probably best to have renamed that to something else, but never mind. And then you just export that. Uh, and in ZBrush, we just import from your library. Um, this is stuff I've stolen so far. <laughs> Even the procedural tiling ones, I really like using this guy. And you're like, but Bernard, it's going to... As long as the focus isn't minus 100, then that'll be sharp. But if it's zero or above, no problem. See? So this is a really cool way to quickly get some nice... I'm pressing C often to sample the color underneath. Yeah, get some texture variation going on. I'm not doing a very good job at the moment, but you get the idea. See, that'll work. Sample black and then go a bit darker. One's not supposed to use pure black ever. It's non PBR, but we're not working in PBR at the moment, and so I don't care. I will use whatever color I like. Thank you very much. But seriously, don't use pure black or pure white usually. This is an exception. And so on. So when I painted this white, I lost the cavity stuff. So just go mask by smoothness again. Control H. Control. I'm um, yeah. Hide that and just let's try a different one. Whatever. No, that's wank. Hmm. This is cool for veins. Of course, 
you can turn on, you know, so you're actually affecting the mesh. Use them as, well, alphas. Well, they are alphas. What am I talking about? But I don't want extra detail now. I just want color. I'm just playing around. I don't, I don't have a plan. I'm just like, oh, that's cool. You know, I'm, I'm not thinking too much at this stage. No, no, that's not working for me. I probably want to go to the alphas. Um, let's check this out. Yeah, this is what I'm looking for. Easy peasy. Yeah, really, I really like patterns like that on animals and on creatures like this guy. Uh, let's go have a darker. Making a bit of a mess now. This needs to be cleaner. So let's clean it up. And uh, too much contrast. Bit lighter. Ah, I would like to accentuate this these bits, so let's cavity it up. Invert. Oops. Now let's really give up the uh, spiny but some strong contrast. Just see what it looks like. Really white. Uh, let me turn alpha off. Yeah. Spend a bit more time on the face. See what happens with this guy. Probably gonna stop here. I mean, one can really go to town and. So. Now that I don't need symmetry anymore, I want to pose the head. Why not? I should have had symmetry on. I keep forgetting that. Let me just redo that. Clear the mask. Okay, let's invert. Control tap. Tap, tap, tap. Blur mask. Dilute mask. Dilute again. Blur, dilute, yeah. That's it. I'm look, I'm gonna make a very relaxed pose, just slight head turn, so it doesn't look so. Right, I'm gonna I wanna separate the eyes because I wanna give them a different material in Mormazet. Split hidden. So the body is one, that's cool. Maybe let's split these guys. There's no harm done. Um Okay, I'm not gonna bother renaming them because it's just a quick thing. So let us go to the set plugin. Visible. Export. Okay, I've opened Marmoset Toolbag 4. Lovely program. And I've imported this guy. So I'm just going to drag whatever material onto the group. So they're all the same one. And to see vertex color, all you got to do is 
do that. Bam, there's your color. Make adjust the roughness. No metal. Yep. I think just half roughness for now will do. And let's drag that one, whatever material, onto the uh, eyes. I should have named them. Huh. Just gonna turn the metalness on so I can see. Yeah, okay. Make it completely glass like. And maybe not pure white. Okay. Um, let's give him some subsurface scattering. The default, if your model is to, is to real world scale, the default setting should, at one, should be good enough. But I think these guys are a bit bigger than real world. Just adjust it to taste, really. Ah, oh, I've got the wrong material. Um, subsurface scattering. I don't want to blur it out, right? I just want to give it a little hint so the skin doesn't look as dead. Okay, there we go. Now let's adjust the settings in the scene. Um, what's the sky? Okay. Choose a different sky. Uh, library. I've actually got this library open on my other monitor, but I'll, for your convenience. Uh, let's see this one. Shift, right click, rotates the light. You add a light by just clicking, you know. We've got these sharp shadows, which I don't like. If you like them, cool. I like soft shadows. So just go in there and diameter, adjust the taste. But they behave differently when ray tracing is on a little bit, I think, or sometimes. And I want to use ray tracing, which looks way better. Advanced light sampling, um, local reflection, local diffuse. AO doesn't work when ray tracing is on, which is fine. It's a pity though, because sometimes I want to use it creatively, like to accentuate curves and so on. But I'm not really invested in that, doing that anymore, because I use Redshift. Alrighty, so we've set ray tracing on the rest I don't really touch let's go to our camera oh it's had a bit of fog fog's great I'm just going to keep it default for now main camera is turn on uh, safe frame it shows you exactly what you're going to render if you render I like to turn the I don't, I don't want to see through it's confusing I just make it opaque Um, right, let's start with the bells and whistles. I like to go to Aces Color Space, the same one Unreal uses, Unreal 5 at least, and 4 I think. Nice and contrasty. So we definitely need more light, this is ridiculously dark, so if you click light button it creates one from where you are. I wish all software had this, it's fantastic, so I want a light from this angle. There we go, a light. Uh, so I like to turn the sky off and just tune lights on their own. Because often I like, I really like what this look. Very simple, one light, moody, fog. And, you know, I'll happily render these out. But of course, let's uh, start at the top. Always have depth of field that just enhances realism a lot I like sticky focus that means wherever you focus doesn't matter where your camera is it always focus on that bit so you want sticky focus on usually uh, middle clicking on your mouse just middle clicking is where the camera focus will stick to which is also awesome now some people overdo uh, the power of a depth of field. If you want that, cool, but it does make the, the stronger the depth of field, the smaller your subject becomes. So now it's a little toy. If you want that, that's totally cool. I prefer just 
a normal that's too much but that's not wrong either it's too much for my taste that's what I should say it's all just whatever it should taste now you can see the perspective of a camera because this is this is a portrait I don't like this subtle bird's eye view so I like to, to lower the field of view from uh, I prefer 20 Way better for me, for portrait. If you do landscape wide shots, you definitely want to, in general, with cameras and photography. I'm, I'm no professional photographer at all, far from it. I know the, some basic preferences and, you know, I don't like this kind of effect. But if you're doing wide shots, yeah, you probably want to increase that. Anyway, I like 15 to 20. Let's go 20 for now, for portraits. Even full body shots. Maybe a little bit higher, because you don't want to lose depth perception either. And like, you don't want it all for graphics. 25 is pretty good for this guy. Okay, so we've got our uh, field of view down. We've got our depth of field a bit. I don't use flare. Motion blur. When I animate, definitely motion blur. Otherwise, animations look very wrong. Chromatic aberration, just a tiny hint. When I first started, well, everyone... People tend to exaggerate it, but I like to up it so until almost like reverb in music production, as soon as you hear it, dial it back and then you, you know you hit the sweet spot, usually. So I use it very subtly. I'll get to these guys in a bit. Saturation doesn't really matter because it's, it's a grayscale thing. Uh, sharpen, I like to have it halfway through. Or as you like, really. I like it really sharp. Bloom, just up it a bit. I like to decrease the the size of it. I don't want it too much. Vignette, depends. You know, if you want to do some post processing, maybe you want a vignette in Photoshop instead. But I just like to add it in the render. If it's like not, you know, just a few quick renders for uh, on for social media and so on. Yeah, I like a bit of grain. That's too much. Because this, this very subtle noise is pleasing to our brains. If it's too clean, it just looks wrong to me. So I, I like very subtle grain. Okay, so let's go to our... I don't use these presets. I do like... Sometimes I often like to use bleached, but modified. So bleached does this. Then I bring the... Bring that back a bit and give it some contrast. I really like this CPR thing with bleached. If you want to rotate your lights and not use the skylight, that looks pretty nice though with the skylight. You can just drag your light into the sky. And if you don't want to use the skylight, just turn the brightness off. Now it's only using the lights that we place in the scene and now your own light system is rotating. So uh, this light is too sharp. So you want to soften those shadows. Lovely. Look at the difference. Looks so much more realistic. Um, it's at a, it's, a rim lights are cool. I don't always use them, but they can frame a subject really nicely. So bam, rim light. Uh, we will have to raise it up so you don't see it through. The, if there was no fog, it wouldn't have been a problem, I think. Am I talking rubbish? Yeah, that's correct. So it's casting this nice rim. I like a cold rim. <laughs> what does that even mean? Like a temperature? I, I don't use color. I prefer temperature. It's more realistic. Nice and cold. So higher is colder. Lower is warmer. That's pretty cool. I like a warm light on him as well. Let's go for warm because I almost always go cold with rim. The cold rumor. Oh, what the fuck am I saying? Um, okay, so that looks like I quite like this warmth. Subtle warmth, not too much. Take that light. Chuck it into our system. Quite like this. Really simple, but I think it's effective if you just quickly, you've sculpted something in ZBrush, 
quick poly paint with masking and get some cool renders. Yeah. And let's turn the uh, sky back on. Because I don't like a black background, like pure black. I, I like some, because it, it takes away depth if it's completely black. So you want, usually you want something, you know, some kind of tone. Even if it's very, very dark, much darker than this, that's fine too. But have, try and have some kind of tone. Right, now we're in Maya. I've imported the same model. This is where I prefer to render stuff in with Redshift. It's just, I don't know if it's a placebo thing, but it just looks great. It looks better than Mama's Ed's ray tracing to me. But that may very well be placebo, but I like using it. It's very fast, and it's not too expensive. So, uh, I've imported our guy. Let me just control G, group him. Demon YouTube. This is my template scene where I do renders. This is where like I rendered uh, Demon S. The promo shots and have like well they were you know the turntable shots but we're not focusing on that now focusing on these guys so let us click that button i'm gonna edit delete unused nodes always be careful with doing that because sometimes uh, materials not what am I doing? Some of the material is not being used. Oh no. Can't move this window, which fucking sucks. Uh, mommy, help me. Ah, oh, ha, ha, ha. Okay. Triumphant. Most triumphant. All right, so... In this scene... Should I explain everything? Ah, oh, why not? I've got a little... Cube that contains... Do not delete. So this is, I've applied each of the materials I want to keep in this scene to a face here. So these guys are essentially material, a holder for my materials in case when I go edit, delete, unused nodes, this will delete all materials that's not currently on a model. So this is a great way to do that, clean, clean stuff up and also retain ones you do want to keep. So... To show vertex colors, you have to, for Maya specifically, you have to export FBX. Maya, if you import an OBJ, there's no vertex colors coming along. I don't know why. There's probably a way to do some clever scripting, but I don't want to do that. So just use FBX. And you will, you will definitely have the vertex color. So this is my material. I want to see what, you know, press this button to lay out the material. Let's make some room. So, to display vertex colors, you just create a assign new material. I'm not going to do that now. Uh, assign new material. Redshift. Redshift material. And um, let's plot that guy out. F, uh, rename it. YouTube mat. There we go. That's what I want to see. So press tab. I want vertex. Redshift vertex color. Out color. Diffuse color. And you need to type in the name. The color set. It's probably color set zero. So to get that, just click on the mesh. Right click and color sets. Color set zero. Ignore the RGBA. That's not part of the name. So color set zero. All right. So click on the vertex color. And 
lower and uppercase matters. Color set zero. Uh, open the Redshift window. And I'm using a 4070 Ti, which is such a lovely upgrade from previously I had a 2070 Ti, but this is so, so much faster. I know it's not a 4080 or a 4090, but it's a, it's a huge improvement on my previous one. So I've probably got noise reduction on, turn it off, okay. You can see the vertex colors are pretty, it's not as contrasted as uh, in Marmoset. Let's fix that. I'm just going to check something. So it is there, but it's very, very subtle. So what I did is I built a material. Now, to be honest, I can't remember how I built it, but let's go through it. This is the one. Vertex color is strong. So I've pre-made this. This is what I... And this is going to look a lot better now. I was hanging a bit there. And now we can properly see the vertex colors. Uh, let's apply to the whole thing. Clicking that enables the camera right in this render port, which is handy. Right, so let's see how this material is made. Ah, I also learned from a... I'll put the source in the description how to make an aut... How to make... A red Chef's bokey, its depth of field, always focused on this cube. So I made a cube, I set it... Uh, render stuff like don't... It's not visible in render, so it's totally off. So I don't have to worry about hiding it every time. Like, so it, you know, it won't show up in renders. So essentially the bow key has been selected and it's... How was that made? Uh, bow key, this guy. That number... is linked to... this distance. It doesn't, doesn't matter where I am. It's like sticky. It's like, it's like a custom-made sticky focus. I'll link the video and how to make one of these uh, in the description below. But it's, it's damn easy. Uh, anyway, so let's look at this material. That's ah for the eyes. I want to apply my redshift glass. No redshift eyes. And what I always like to do is take just a sphere. And place it outside, just to encapsulate the eye, emulating just a quick and dirty uh, outer eye. Whoops. What am I doing? Come on, man. Yeah, it'll do. Doesn't have to be perfect. And then I... Uh, normally I'd mirror because the face would be looking straight forward, but this guy's head is not... is pointing to the side, so that's fine. Just... Take that and... Position it over his eye. Uh, 
That'll do. And I want to apply a completely transparent glass shader to that. Let's have a look. Well, this kind of lighting setup. Oh no, it does catch a twinkle in his eye. Because you want that. If you've got that shine on the eye, that indicates life more than anything else. There's life in this thing. But this light setup isn't particularly accentuating that. So let's look at this main vertex color material. Um, it's this guy. Plot him. There we go. So it was just a. Uh, plain redshift standard material, which I've renamed that. I've renamed the shader group as well. Now we've, I've got a color layer. I'm layering colors. Proceed, yeah, sort of procedural. Firstly, I have... I'm so sorry. I don't know what's wrong with my mouse hand. Let's, let's organize this quickly so it's easier to see what, what is where. So redshift color layer, if you type uh, re uh, layer, there it is, redshift color layer. Let me get this guy. Vertex color, I've got two different ones. I can't remember why, let's investigate. Redshift curvature, again, just tab and plug them in. So the first base color I made black. Don't know why, but this works. Can't remember why, it's often lots of testing. Uh, Sean Spetch. Huh. Um, shout out to Sean Spetch. <laughs> uh, then the first layer would be the vertex color. And the cool thing is you can, see, like in Photoshop, you can set layers to multiply, screen overlay and so on. So the first one is just normal, straight up color. And this is our vertex color, color set zero. And I probably lowered the color again so it's more contrasty. So play with this. So the default is that, I think. I made it. Yeah. To my taste. Then the next layer. You have to enable them, by the way. This is off by default. Was another uh, vertex color. And I'm just trying to figure out why I did this. Let's see. So this is like same, co same color set. This is different. Interesting. So why? And that, okay, that's multiplying. Okay. I think I just boost the overall vertex color in this. After, you know, I just randomly tested. So, and then thirdly, we have curvature. So layer three, enable it. I've set it to multiply color of white. What's plug into the alpha? The curvature. Okay, yeah, because it wouldn't plug into color. And curvature, you can set it to convex, concave, so on to taste, you know, play around. This radius really depends on your model's scale. Uh, so it's, I can't say which one to use. This one, just you'd have to test while the render is open. And then, uh, let me exaggerate to show what this does. Let's make this uh, yellow, because yellow is the color. It stands out the most. That's why high visibility vests are yellow. Bright yellow. That's the ugliest yellow I can think of. Good, it'll stand out. Puke yellow. So we should be... I think I've got the saturation off. Nope, saturation's on, so I don't know how I look like a prick. Why is it not showing up? Um, let's find out. It's troubleshoot. Oh, because well, it's set to multiply, of course. Let's set it to uh, normal. It should show up now. Yep, there we go. So you can uh, do really cool things with this. Um, let me just organize stuff better so we can all see everything at once and I'm not constantly, constantly minimizing and turn that off. Okay, that's what I wanted to do. 
as you can see curvature does exactly that concave would do the inverse so let's play around I'm trying to give you an idea of what this stuff is but I had it to white and multiply by white that would do nothing or would it I'm not sure multiply let's do a little test um, let's render Look how fast it's going to render once it's calculated preliminary irradiance cache or whatever it's called. Look at that. Hmm. It's just, I really love these renders. They look so realistic. The lighting and it's just a really high quality redshift. Okay, so. Now I want to take this. I'm just going to render this box. Let's disable that curvature layer and render that. And if there's no difference, I'm a prick. Simple as that. Oh, I th I know why. Because I, I had... I've just got that on in case I want to do some... Because I did some renders where I had it purple. So I'm not, I'm not a prick. Take that back. Sorry, me. Um, okay. Let's, but yeah, if, if you want to get creative and you don't have vertex colors, you can get really cool looking stuff with the color layer. Some uh, make some be metal, others be non metal. You can have AO. No, in fact, I have an AO node plugged in here. I'll show you in a sec. So we want this not multiply, but normal. You get the idea. Anyway, we're not going to use that now. The fourth one... <clears throat> excuse me. The fourth one is... Let's get this out of the way. Ambient occlusion. So it's just, again, tab, ambient. There we go. You choose redshift ambient occlusion. Plug it into color. And AO is set to multiply, as it almost always is. Let's see what happens when we turn it off. This one is also quite subtle, I think. In fact, let's um, render. Okay. It slowed down. This is a bug. A known bug in Redshift. When this happens, you need to... I forgot what. Uh, you need to restart the PC, essentially. This is, this is a rare bug, but when it happens, just restarting Maya will not help. It's, it's like 10 times slower now. Normally it would render in 8 seconds. Not... Well, it'll tell us a total time. Not 35. So it's massively, massively slowed down. I'm not going to restart the PC now. Because I just don't want to. But anyway, so... One can go to town. There are 7 layers. You can plug in a hell of a lot and just... But I've... This was enough for my needs. And this is... And the color, oh yeah, the AO itself, uh, I just use the default settings, I think. I may have increased. No, just default. You can choose what time. I'm not sure. I forgot what they do. But yeah, just default AO, bit of curvature, vertex color combined. You can get really nice renders and you haven't done any UVing or retop of any of that stuff. For just a sculpt, it's not you know, it's not worth it if you if you're not going to animate it to do all that bloody work, and then it's just going to be a static for, for a static render. So no matter of showing you the material and the idea behind it, uh, I I'll go away. Let me stop that. What have I done again? I'm not used to working in one window, so excuse my RSI. So what's this? Is this Let's plot it. Yeah, this is just a straight up redshift material, dark color, and I turned it from from 
It's normally back when I turn to GGX and I turn IO to metalness as well. Uh, no metalness, but it's very rough, you know, zero, so it's completely... And to show you what the eyes can look like in a different lighting scene, I've got three light setups. This one is uh, the three-point light setup, it's just three lights, two rim, and a front light, that's it. And I've got a second, I've got a copy of that, I've got an HDR skylight here, which is linked to just this object, these outer eyes. So it only lights up these eyes to give them an, uh, it's called light linking, to give them an extra bit of shine. So I tend to use these two light setups together. This is uh, just a pure HDR dome, let's turn it on. It's got a blue tint to it, I love this HDR. Um, which is this dome. And then my third setup is very washed out, but give me a second. Uh, this is called Kiara Dawn, the HDR. And for this specific HDR, I really crank up Black Crush because it looks cool specifically with this setup. I wouldn't normally have Black Crush at all in renders, but specifically for my grayscale vertex coloring, I think it looks really cool. To taste, of course. And if you want, you can. I can mix it with my fog lights, but because the black crush is so high, that f fog gets crushed. Really slow now because of uh, yeah that bug I mentioned. So that's my three light setups. What else is pertinent to this? I mean, obviously there's some details I've not discussed, but... Just ask me in the comments below, I'll, I'll answer everyone's questions as soon as I can. If, you, if you're like, what, how do you do that, this or that, I'll answer it. What else is there? It's about it, really. Really simple stuff, but quick. Renders in, in uh, Redshift or Mama Z if you don't have Redshift. I'm sure a lot of you use Blender. I'm lucky in that my day job, you know, pays for all the software. My ass, it's expensive. Unless you buy the indie license, which they don't advertise, but you can buy it. It's much. It's like three hundred dollars a year, fully featured. It's not Maya LT or Maya Light. It's full fat Maya for three hundred dollars a year, but you have to make less than a hundred thousand dollars. Which I'm sure many of us do, a year, uh, to be to be to be allowed to use that license, which is a pretty good deal. So I can't show Blender workflows because I don't know Blender. Uh, Blender is if I had to start th my 3D career or training right now, I would definitely go with Blender above everything else because a lot, m way more studios are using it. Um. Well, all studios now are using it. You don't have to know Maya anymore. You can just use... And Blender is free and super powerful. I just still use Maya because I know it very well. I know, I know the hotkeys. I'm very good with this. You know, operating this really fast. All these menus, blah, blah, blah. And I don't want to relearn anything if I don't have to. One day, if I work at a place where Maya is not available, I will, then I will have to learn. Blender. Anyway, enough waffling about that crap. This is how I approach rendering just sculpts. Now, next video, which I will make later this week, will be the actual dirty retopology, dirty UVs, texturing, and painter for cinematic shots in Maya or Marmoset. I just thought I'd show this first because you can end it here. You can. Just get some cool vertex colors going in uh, in ZBrush, really. You know, it doesn't have to be grayscale. I just really like grayscale. It's, it's way easier to quickly get something that looks nice if you're just working in monotone. Or grayscale, I mean. Uh, then, but colors could look 
be way better if you spend a bit more time, you know, just the whole paint something lovely. And render it. This is what I really love about Redshift is it's... Let's render this, is it's nice post-processing. Now, if you, if you go rendering animation and so on, you'd probably not turn... Save the post-processing here. Because you want raw images in Premiere or After Effects or whatever, or Nuke, wherever the hell you compose your stuff. But I often don't. I just process it right here, I commit. And I don't recommend this, but I do this when it's not for serious production, just a quick cinematic. I just... Yeah. I like having... I think it look good while I work. Why wouldn't I? Look how slow this is. Again, that's a bug. It should be 8 seconds and not 10,000. So in the meantime, while that's working, can I operate these? Yeah, I can. So I use the lookup tables a lot. I like... Uh, well, I like a lot of them. This one is quite subtle, I think. Yeah. Just a slight warmer tone. But that looks pretty cool without it. So, yeah. Uh, color controls. I up the contrast just a wee bit. And the curve just to make it pop a bit more. Always reference really good renders online to, to tune your stuff to. Doesn't mean you have to copy, just, you know, reference. Uh, I always use this because it just. Well. Specifically for this. Vertex color setup and HDR, but like I said, normally I don't have this on. Just for for this guy, for this HDR. Vignetting, of course, always. Um, I don't really touch that stuff. Bloom, yep, always. I don't use flare or streak. Bokeh is depth of field. And deep, when I, this is really good. The noise you can really really good it really s speeds up rendering so you don't have to set the samples to like a thousand and just keep it at like 16 or 32 in redshift sampling you know and then in the end if there's any noise this does such a great job of getting rid of fireflies uh and so on uh, that's about it i'm gonna stop here now i think and then Next video, whenever, later this week sometime, will be about the dirty retopo in UV. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Um, speak to you later. Bye.